You know what would make this blade an awesome backpacking knife? Is its weight. You get pretty much four inch blade. All of this coming in at three ounces for a fixed blade. Now wait a minute. That's pretty lightweight for a fixed blade. So maybe the, th the weight factor making it awesome for a backpacking knife, well, maybe it makes it not so awesome as a backpacking knife. We'll get to that in a little bit, if you already don't know. This blade is the Spyderco Bill Moran. It's a very nice blade. I quite like it a lot. Uh, it goes back with Spyderco all the way to the 1990s. And when I went to the OR show, I was talking to Spyderco reps, and they actually told me this is one of their best sellers, interestingly enough. So I don't really see it talked about often, though, to be honest with you. So I was a bit surprised by that. Let's get into this, shall we? The blade steel on this knife is a VG10. You guys know I like VG10. Do I think it's some super steel, the best steel ever made? No, but I like VG10 steel. Uh, I've had a good experience with it. It takes an edge extremely well. And from what I've seen, what I've experienced, the rust resistance on it is very good. The blade style, I really like it. It's the drop point. It's kind of a nice overall universal blade style. The spine, you can see, it tapers down in thickness to the tip. And I've never had problems, if it'll focus here, with the tip in my use. And the actual primary bevel here, or at least the edge, you can see that it almost curves the whole way. It's got a nice belly on it. But you, if you look at it close, it almost doesn't really flatten out down here like many do. It almost just from the get-go starts to curve. The hole, if uh, many of you are wondering what that's about, that's just more, uh, if you look at Spyderco's stretch I've got on me, that's kind of Spyderco's trademark with their deployment hole. So that's just all that's signifying. doesn't really serve any function there. Finger choil, we've got one here, although it's not a typical finger choil. Most of the ones that uh, I prefer have a uh, kind of more of a, a rounded radius edge to it. However, having said that, that works good enough to get in there and, and choke up a little bit if you like to. I know some guys don't like the choils. I do. Moving on to the handle here. This handle, and we're not done with the blade yet. This handle is a FRN, fiberglass reinforced nylon, with craton inserts. The craton inserts, you've got them on each side, and then you also have it on the top, kind of uh, in the place of jimping, I suppose. So if you put your, if you're using it in this function, uh, you've got a little bit of grip there. The actual ergonomics of this handle are extremely nice. I really like the ergos on it. It's just an overall well-rounded um, handle. And you'll notice here at the end, see how this tapers in? That's nice too, especially when choking up. Then you see my, my pointer finger there kind of rests on that tapered portion, of course, left or right. And that's really nice too. Again, um, I prefer uh, more of that round finger choil, but for what it is, it works okay. Lanyard hole down there at the bottom, you can see, uh, not overly thick, but not overly thin either, as far as the uh, inner diameter goes. Now, let's get back to that comment about it being a good backpacking knife for the weight. Yes, absolutely, because it's three ounces. But is this going to be a good backpacking knife overall? Now, for me, personally, I'm going to say no, it's not. And here's why. This, actually, I didn't know this when I purchased the knife. But this is not a full 
tang blade. Now for those that don't know what the tang is, that's the portion that extends down from the blade. If it's a full tang, it extends all the way down in the handle to the blade. So it's just one piece of metal with a handle put around it. Now as you can imagine, that's going to give you a lot more strength. This is more of a, I guess you could call it a rat's tail, possibly. Let me grab some paper here. We're going to try this, shall we? <laughs> so this actually, if I can do this on camera here, I'm not sure how far it goes in, but what it does is it comes in about yay long, and then there's some little grooves that are cut out in it. Um, this isn't exact, but it just kind of gives you an idea. So what these cutouts do right here is it just helps it hold inside the handle a little bit better. So that's kind of what you're looking at as far as metal that's inside that handle. And that equates to a big portion of the knife weighing in at a very lightweight three ounces. Now, again, if, if you're me, I tend to treat my blades pretty rough when I go out. And I'm not quite ready to take out a blade that has that type of tang in it, that rat tail type of tang. I prefer, I prefer something with a full tang. And again, I'm kind of jumping around here. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Before we get too far into that, I want to talk about the sheath. The sheath is a very nice sheath. It's not Kydex, and I can't remember what it is right now, but it is not Kydex. But it snaps in there very firmly, and it stays in there very firmly. Doesn't rattle, no moving around. It's a very good sheath. Now, if you look at this hole on the bottom, it had one of these rivets in it, and I actually removed that rivet because of the way I like to carry this knife. So uh, that did look like that when I first got it. Of course, we have a drainage hole right here, and these two holes right here come with, I think they call this the G clip, and it actually works pretty well. And the fun thing about it is see the configuration I have it now, there's two screws in there that line up so you can carry the blade in the horizontal configuration. And obviously you can do this left or right side. You can carry it in the vertical position or you can carry it a little bit, if I can figure out there we go, I think that's it right there. You can carry it at a diagonal. Normally, I don't even use these when they come with any blade because of the configuration I like to use in a sling over my shoulders with my blades. Many of you who've watched the videos know what I'm talking about. So let's just get back to this and maybe we'll just have some fun talking. We'll just let the camera run here and uh, we'll enjoy the discussion, hopefully. I've, I've heard this blade compared a lot to the Mora knives, and I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with Mora knives, so I can't draw that uh, comparison myself. I do like this blade. I have batoned with it, some light batoning, but to go in the backcountry and do what I generally do with knives, um, over time I think I would feel uncomfortable with this, being that it's not a full tank. Especially as a, how do we want to call it? Let's say you're out in the back country and you get lost and you really need your blade. I mean, that's, for me, that's going to be a major tool. I would much rather have a blade with a full tang that I know is going to support me a lot better as opposed to this one. So again, I like the overall looks of this blade and I did fail to mention that this comes in a trailing point also. Uh, I like the drop point. I like the handles and it's kind of a different looking knife and I don't mind that. I think it I think it looks good. I don't mind that at all. But I think where this blade is going to end up, I've had this now for, geez, I don't know how long. Um, it's 2013, probably 
at least a year, a year and a half, and is kind of one that sits in the drawer that doesn't get much play because I prefer to take out other blades that are my full tank when it comes to fixed blades. I might relegate this to the kitchen and use it for food prep because for a food prep knife, it would be awesome. And speaking of that, I kind of finding a role for this. You know, a camping knife instead of a backpacking knife. Yeah, I think it'd be great for that. Take it in the trailer or whatever and uh, do some uh, food prep with it. Some carving, I think it'd be a great carving knife, but not one that I'm going to depend on when I'm out, when I'm out backpacking. That's just not going to be what it's for. So you might ask yourself, well, do I do I even want to buy this knife to begin with? You know, that, that's going to be up to you. I'll be honest, uh, knowing what I know now about the Tang, I probably would not buy it. I would spend the money on something else. Now. Having said that, I do have it in my hand and it is a great, great blade ergonomically. The edge sharpness, edge retention of VG10 from what I've used it for has worked well for me. The drop point with this, this arcing belly of the blade, I mean, I really like the knife from that point of view, but it's not going to suit all of my needs for me. For example, this blade is going to run you about, again, depending on where you get it from, about $88. So if we take a look at, here's the SOG Northwest Ranger. And the SOG, that's coming in at, what is that coming in at, 60? Not, not for this blackened version, but for the satin version, it'll come in at 60. And this is 6.2 ounces versus the three ounces. So we're more than double, just over double with this blade from the Spyderco Bill Moran. But I think that's really good weight because you're getting a full tang knife. The blade length, you're getting about inch, inch and a half longer. But this is still a really, really light backpacking knife. So if you're looking to save weight, this might be an option to go with because of how, how light it is, but also that it's got the full tank construction in it. So it's gonna handle a lot more um, hard use than this Bill Moran will likely handle. The one thing about this one though, that you're gonna win on the Bill Moran, is the Bill Moran comes with a much better sheath in my opinion than the SOG Northwest Ranger. This comes with just a leather sheath snap. It's a pr actually a pretty crappy sheath in my book. This one, um, I made a Kydex sheath for it and I'm not gonna show it off because <laughs> it's pretty ugly, but functional. So again, going back to, we're looking about $88 for this. What about this blade? This is the SE4. This is coming in at, oh, 107. So with a little bit more, and if you're gonna get a wilderness blade, I would highly recommend you not get this uh, sharpened back blade. I like sharpened back blades for fighting blades, not for a wilderness blade, it sucks. Yeah, uh, just get the normal version. So let's look at a size comparison. So again, we're a little bit bigger there. And this is gonna be significantly heavier than the Moran. The four is coming in about 7.4 ounces. To the three but again what are we getting for the extra weight we're getting a lot of stability a lot of strength that the moran is going to give us with just that uh, rat tail tang as opposed to the full tang that the se4 offers us more money yes but i think given these two this is what what i would buy if i'm going to go backpacking still a little bit heavy And just for fun, the SE Izula 2 as a comparison. So this blade is gonna run you about $70 to this 88. Again, these are just, you know, depending on where you get them from. This blade is coming in at 3.4 ounces to the three ounces. So very comparable in weight 
Blade length, of course, is going to be a little bit smaller than the Moran on the uh, Izula 2. But what you're getting here again is you're getting a full tang blade. So this is going to handle, and I've, I've really beat this blade. So overall, I mean, do I like this blade? I do. I really do. But it has to fit a specific role. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you want to bring a backup blade out backpacking. You bring a, a bigger carbon steel blade and you want to have a lightweight blade to back it up. Maybe that's it. But uh, still, you can get something like this with a full tank. So, as you can tell, I'm kind of hung up on the fact that it's not a full tang blade. Um, you're going to have to make that decision. You know, maybe, maybe you're one of the guys out there that says, baton, why the hell do you baton use an axe? So maybe that knife would be worth it to you. Who knows? For me, and what I do with knives, I would prefer to take a uh, full tang blade out. So I think I said this already, but my plan is with the Bill Moran. I like the knife quite a bit, but I think I might relegate it to uh, kitchen duty here at the house because um, honestly our kitchen knives suck. <laughs> and I will probably use this as a camping knife also. Might stick it in the trailer when we go camping. Um, I don't show you guys a lot of those vids, but we do go camping when we can. We've got a little pop-up that's kind of fun. So there is the review of the Bill Moran. Take it or leave it, depending on how you feel about that that tang portion of the blade. Uh, have Removing that from the equation, this is a fantastic blade that I think will serve you well. If, you, if you're hard on your blades, then you probably want to look elsewhere, elsewhere for a different blade that's going to hold up a little better in the long run. There it is, guys. The Bill Moran. Like it, leave it, love it or hate it. It's up to you. Thanks much.